And it is a beautiful night in San Diego. Third member of our broadcast team is Lisa Salters. She's down below, and let's check in with Lisa. Well, Brent, the Sun Devils leading rusher Keegan Herring isn't 100% tonight, but according to him, he's close to it. Herring suffered a high ankle sprain during their last regular season game against Arizona, and he didn't even really practice with the team since that injury until they got here to San Diego. Dennis Erickson told us that for the first time since the injury, Herring practiced at close to full speed on Christmas Day, and when I spoke to Herring before the game, he said, I'm at 95.7%, so that's pretty good. He's not starting, but he said, expect to see me a lot. Now, in his place in the backfield, Texas native Dimitri Nance, and don't sleep on Nance. He leads the Sun Devils in touchdowns this season with seven, and he and only one other player in Texas history have rushed for over 3,000 yards in one high school season. The other player, former University of Texas star Cedric Benson. Right. All right, Lisa, thank you. So, Dennis Erickson, the Pac 10's coach of the year, co champion, of course, lost the tiebreaker because they lost to the Trojans. And on the other side, Mac Brown. Tenth season with the Horns, 80% winner. And, of course, up in the Rose Bowl, won that dramatic national championship with Vince Young as his quarterback. Both teams, as you see Rudy Carpenter kneeling, He'll watch the first series, Arizona State winning the toss. They have deferred, and so the Longhorns will take the football. Both teams feature excellent return men. Juan Cosby of the Horns has one kickoff return for a touchdown. Obana is back with him. They kick short to keep it away from him. And as a result, the Horns will be working with a short field with their first series of the game. Powerful return by Kendall Carrillo of 27 yards, one of the upbacks, and here comes Colt McCoy. Kirk. Well, Colt McCoy, people have looked at him and they've seen the interceptions at 18 and wondered what has happened to him. I think early in the year, quite honestly, Brent, I think he was pressing a bit, trying to make too many things happen. About the Oklahoma game on, he's settled down, and I think this offense has found an identity running the football, and it's taken some of the pressure off of him. Complete. Jordan Shipley and the Devils were ready, and now today's starting lineups presented by Yellow Book, and here is head coach Mac Brown. At quarterback, you got Colt McCoy, perfect name for the Texas quarterback. Backfield, you got Jamal Charles, rapidly becoming one of the best running backs in Texas storied history. Nate Jones, senior receiver, graduated in three and a half years, the only senior on the Texas offense. That means you got a young offensive line, very athletic. A really improved since that last football game. Got their hands full tonight, but we're looking forward to watching. McCoy keeps it. Short of the first down marker. Colt McCoy coming off of that handoff. Decides to follow his running back, Jamal Charles. I think he wanted to keep that and go to the opposite side, but a good job of recognizing the defense and trying to pick up as many yards as he can. And that's the thing with Colt McCoy. People don't realize he's a, a much better athlete than, uh, than I think a lot of people think. He has great feet. Third down and three for the Horns. Here's Jamal Charles, the dangerous one. First and ten, crosses the 35 to the 25-yard line, and out of bounds, number 25, the junior from Port Arthur. Well, Brett Troy Nolan, the safety, is up to add the eighth man to the line of scrimmage. They've got to be able to make this play, but look at the quickness right there. He goes right by Nolan, and it gives you an indication of how fast Jamal Charles is once he makes the move to the outside. Third and short. Arizona State had exactly what they wanted with the eighth man up in the box. Troy Nolan could not make the play against the quicker Charles. A 16-yard burst by number 25 gives the Horns a first and 10. They slip it to him. He crosses the 20-yard line. Mark Hort, the defender. Come on, guys, he's way out of bounds. You're not a bounds. 
That voice you hear is Mac Brown yelling at the officials. Come on, guys. He's two yards out of bounds. He's fired up. Wants a late hit. See that? Look at that intensity. He had to get up at 6 in the morning for practice, too, for this ball game. He's got a game face on him. Oh, tonight, boy. He? he is ready to go tonight. SEC crew working the game here tonight. Second down and one. Flanker screen to Shipley. And it's first down for the Horns. Now, let's see why Mac was so upset. Watch this hit. Clearly out of bounds. The defender goes low. He's out of bounds. The defender could have let up. Mac Brown trying to work the officials early to his advantage. But if you're a Texas Longhorn fan, the game could not have started any better. You take the ball past midfield, two or three plays, you move right down close to the 10 yard line. Now we'll see if they can punch it in, get it into the end zone. Obanaya checks in as the running back. Play fake, McCoy moves to the right, fires in zone, incomplete. I am not sure if Nate Jones didn't think that the solid white was part of the end zone. He was working free in the back of the end zone, and the way the blue dissolves to white here at Qualcomm, if you have not played in this stadium before, there's a possibility of it. That's an excellent point, Brent. When you're playing in a new stadium, new circumstances, you're not quite familiar maybe with the way the, the setup of the field is, but I can tell you that the feet tonight a Colt McCoy will be a factor in this game against this Arizona State defense. He's buying time with his speed and finding receivers downfield, which was a big concern for Arizona State coming in. He was out of bounds and then came back in. That is not a catch in the right call on the field. Now McCoy rolls right out of bounds at about the one-yard line is Nate Jones, number nine, the senior from Texarkana. I think it's imperative with a young offensive line. You indicated the eight different offensive line that they've had to start this year because of various injuries up front. They lost their two senior captains on this offensive line. Imperative that Colt McCoy in this offense finds some confidence and some rhythm early in this game. And Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator, has come out with his guns blazing with different play callings, different formations, really keeping the Arizona State defense on their heels. All right, Lowkey checks in. Derek Lowkey. The defensive tackle, he'll line up as the fullback. Vondrell McGee. McCoy fakes, going to throw for a touchdown. The Horns on their first drive. Derek Lowkey, his first touchdown, floats out of the backfield and catches a pass. So for the last couple of years, he's been the lead blocker. And yesterday, we asked him at the luncheon if he would like to lobby to score a touchdown. Little did we know that this play was in their game plan. <laughs> That's some speed getting out there to the edge. Made it pretty easy for Colt McCoy. Caught the Arizona State defense completely off guard. There is the senior who is an outstanding student, folks. They brag about him. He and Frank Oakham. And Ryan Bailey adds the extra point. Texas makes good use of a short field. And a low key rumbles in for his first touchdown. Hi. <laughs> a couple of beach bumps from way back, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we talked about the return man, Kirk for Texas, but young Burgess, Rudy Burgess, has a kick return for a touchdown. Now, the Arizona State strategy of kicking away from the Texas star did not work. Let's see here what Hunter Lawrence has been instructed to do with this kickoff. Burgess is going to field it at the 17 and cut back to the middle. And he's down at the 24-yard line. Sergio Kendall was down there on the special team. And here comes Rudy Carpenter. Big arm, a lot of fire. Here. Yeah, a lot of fire. He is a great emotional leader for Arizona State, Brandon. You go back and looking at his performance last year, I think he felt some pressure replacing Sam Keller and tried to do too much. This year, with a new offensive system with Rich Olsen, really settled in, got his confidence going early, and had a great year for Arizona State. 
And probably their best year since Jake Plummer was the quarterback. And here is Dimitri Nance, the running back. And speaking of Jake, let's have him introduce his alma mater, Jake, who's undoubtedly watching his home up around Sandpoint, Idaho, where he now lives. Here's Nance, who we mentioned. And this should leave them with about a third and short. We'll we'll check that for you. You know, speaking of uh, of Jake, Kirk, a lot of people wonder what he's doing and uh, is he still in football and he is not and we've got an injured player here. It's like Jared Norton's down Brent. So he drew a start here. As they redid the linebackers Jared Norton was at Mike instead of Bobino Scott Derry and Roderick McElroy also earned starts in the 6 a.m. workouts that you talked about and now uh, he limps off and Bobino checks in third down and two Play fake Nance and Carpenter rolling hard to the right throws for the first down puts it in the hands of the sure handed one Chris McGahey. That's his 53rd catch of the season. Kirk. Uh, he always seems to not only make catches for Rudy Carpenter but they're always first downs on third down. He is his go to man. I like to call a little play action going back the other way taking it against the momentum. I think it, Texas was expecting a run on third and short. Arizona State able to execute here on their first third down of the game. McGehe has not scored a touchdown, but on Christmas Day he proposed to Aubrey McClue and she said yes. So what a season it's been for him as Carpenter throws one away. And uh, let's bring in Mac Brown and we've got a penalty flag down. Let's hang on a minute. I think the question was going to be was he outside the tackle to be able to throw the football and it's not intentional grounding and they will lose significant yardage here. Coming off of that play action Brent. Texas was in his face before he could even come off of the ball fake. Texas brought the blitz. McElroy is right there. Arakpo's in there. A number of Texas defenders. It forced Rudy just to get rid of the ball, but he was not outside of the tackle box area, and it's intentional grounding. He felt the heat that time from that defensive line. Arakpo, Brian Arakpo was coming after. Him. Yeah, they've been very. They've been ridiculed most of the year, but they've been injured. Arakpo hasn't played very much this year at 100%. Aaron Lewis is back in the lineup tonight. They're anxious to try to get pressure on Rudy Carpenter. Vance. Now let's have Mac come in and introduce his defense. Leading us up front, two defensive tackles, Derek Loki, Frank Ocam. Great football players on the field, but even better students and people off the field. Our linebackers are led by Scott Derry, a senior who's won a lot of football games at the University of Texas. And that secondary is led by Marcus Griffin, really quiet off the field, but he will knock you out on the field. I look forward to watching these guys play. <laughs> He's carried <character>, out. <laughs> I look forward to watching these guys play. So we're back. Third down and 18. Carpenter under pressure again. Puts it in the hands of his tight end, Brent Miller. He's the brother of Zach, who moved on to the National Football League. Beasley, the defender for the Horns. Well, Texas gets off to the kind of start that they wanted to. Last time we saw the Horns, they lost to Texas A&M. They've had to hear about it for 34 days to get out here. They score in their opening drive, and they force Arizona State to punt. Here's Rudy Carpenter back to the drawing board. Here's their great kicker, Thomas Weber. He won the Lou Groza hitting 22 of 23 field goals, but he's also the punter as you look from behind, number 28. And that is a good return man, Quan Cosby, deep for the horns. Cosby runs up, takes an Arizona State bounce. It'll roll dead right at the 10 yard line. So one of the weak points of the Sun Devil season has been the punting, certainly not the field goal kicking, but they get a big time roll in the devil likes the lights of San Diego. Coronado Island twinkling there in the background. Longhorns up by seven here as the sun sets in the Pacific. 
coming up on 5.30. Colt McCoy and the Horns, they scored on their first series of the evening. At handoff, Charles spins to the 11-yard line. Interesting if you compare freshman and sophomore years for Colt. Well, I think a lot of people have ridiculed Colt McCoy this year because of the number 18. 21 touchdowns, 18 interceptions. You could see that he, he hasn't had that bad a year. He threw for over 3,000 yards. And talking to Greg Davis, as I said, I think that there was so much on him this year after the great freshman year that I think he tried to live up to that hype. And then when he lost the line to Swede, it was too much to deal with. Draw play. Going to be short of the first down to the 15, but we've got a flag. Gaithel making the stop on the quarterback, but there is a penalty. Talking about those 18 interceptions, uh, the coaches went back and tracked them. Eight of them were tipped. And that's against the Arizona State defense. And it was interesting that Mac, uh, Mac told us, Kirk, that in the pocket. Offside, 58 on the defense. 35 yards. Down remain second. In the pocket, he threw only one interception. Yeah. A lot of it was on the move when he was rolling, trying to make things happen, he, trying to force the issue. Exactly. And, I, and I, like I said, I think when he lost Lima Swede, he really felt that he had to make some things happen. They just don't, don't have Texas. When you take Lima Swede out of this lineup, the group of wide receivers are solid, but they don't have a lot of difference makers. Their difference maker is number 25, Jamal Charles. And that's what they started. To, that's the team that they started to become. In the last six games, they started to run the football more with Jamal. And there is Jamal making his way close to a first down before he was pushed back. And again, Gaithel, the defender, and we'll see exactly where this ball is spotted. This is very close. Third down. You know, be, because of Jamal Charles becoming this offense, Arizona State's come into this game. They've had a lot of time to prepare, and they're saying, we've got to stop Jamal Charles. Let's force them to make somebody else beat us. But they are locked in tonight to slow down Jamal. Behind Chris Hall, the center. And Chris Hall is quite a longhorn scorer. Folks, he's a young man who has started at guard, tackle, and tonight at center. He's done a little bit of everything. And as we told you, this is the eighth offensive line alignment that the Horns have used this season. And they lost three starters from a year ago to graduation, Stuttered, Senline, Blaylock, and then Tony Hill's injury this season. So it has really been a struggle gaining consistency, which as every football man knows is so critical with an offensive line. Throws off the fake. And slipping was Nate Jones. The big thing is when you lose Tony Hills and Dallas Griffin, your two offensive linemen who are seniors, and your two offensive captains late in the year really puts a lot on Mac Brown and, and on this Texas offense. And they've made some adjustments. They feel really good about the youth up front. And they really want to try to use this game as a confidence builder to get ready for the offseason, to get ready for 2008. Only one senior playing quite a bit of football tonight for this Texas offense. We'll see what the Sun Devil defense comes up with here on second down and nine. Open Iowa is the running back. And it's a reverse. Quasby, the baseball player, going to throw off the end around. Incomplete. And the Sun Devils were not full. Let's have Jake Plummer introduce this Arizona. So, Jake. And you know, when you look at his record as a Broncos starter, his last tenure in the NFL, Jake was 39 and 15. Broncos would settle for that. Oh, they would sure would. I watched him today in that 1997 Rose Bowl that you called. It was oh, a great game. Yeah. Ohio State came back yeah. on the last drive. Third down. Here's Colt McCoy in the middle. Drop. Jones was well defended that time by Troy Nolan, the young man who had six interceptions on the season. And number 14 was right there with his coverage. Wow, that was great coverage. And one of the things that you'll see tonight again from Colt McCoy is an ability to step in. There's such good pressure off the edge from Arizona State. He'll try to step up into the pocket and make a throw. But this time, Troy Nolan is right there, gets an arm up, and knocks the ball away on third down. Justin Moore back to punt. 
and there was movement in that line. Brandon Smith had stepped across, and the line judge over here. Dead ball, illegal snap on the center, 35 yards. Now remains four. And that's why he moved, no question about it. William Harvey snapping on the punts. He drew the man offside into that neutral zone. He's moving at football. I'm surprised the furthest guy from the ball is the only one who moved. Kyle Williams back to give Arizona State good field position. It's going to be their turn to work with a short field. On the 47-yard line, Rudy Carpenter and the Devils down by seven. But they've got a golden opportunity coming up here. The Pacific Life Holiday Bowl. Texas leads it by. We welcome you back to San Diego with Lisa Salters and Kirk Herbstreit. I'm Brett Musburger. Texas leads Arizona State, having scored on the first series, working with a short field. Now, Kirk. It's Arizona State's turn. Uh, Rich Olson, the offensive coordinator from Arizona State, had an opportunity to go back, as I said, to the drawing board and find out how they're going to try to attack Tech Texas. They've got to throw the football downfield against the Longhorns eventually. Nance picks his way. Oh, 30-30, and we check in. Hold on now. We've got a fumble down on the field. So they must have just pulled the ball right away from him as he was going down. As he was going down, Brandon Foster, who's an undersized defensive back, got it up underneath him and just ripped the football out before his knee touched. We'll see if they'll review it and if, in fact, his knee was down. But Foster just fought in there. I, I'm like Dennis. I want to see what it, What just too. happened? I mean, Nance is the power back. Does the knee touch? He's still up right now. Look at Foster, 28. He just rips the ball out as Nance is falling to the ground. The ball has been given to Texas on the field. Is it indisputable? Was the knee down? Remember, uh, instant replay different than the NFL, of course. Being looked at up in that booth, if they need a little more time, they would signal down below, which is exactly what they've done here. So they are going over and over. And has to be indisputable for the uh, for the official upstairs, the eye in the sky, to turn it over. You know, it's interesting when you think about Dennis Erickson. Instant replay, folks, exists in the National Football League because of what happens to him. I don't know how many of you remember it. He was coaching Seattle against the Jets, and Vinny Testaverde was given a touchdown when he was about two yards short of the end zone. Cost the Seahawks a spot in the playoffs that year. And that was one of the compelling reasons for ownership of the National Football League to turn to instant replay. And now, of course, a couple years ago, the Big Ten led the you, march. The ruling on the field stands. First down. So the Longhorns have it, and we've got our game's first turnover. What year was that with Seattle? You know, how far back? No, it goes back a little bit uh, with Dennis. Uh, was it late 80s, early okay. 90s? You know, right, okay. right about that time. Yeah, you know, it's crazy here. It's the greatest thing that happened there is how quickly this uh, this crew called upstairs, got the call, boom, made it back downstairs, and away we go. Childs was the quarterback, and wow, Jamal explodes. Pushed out of bounds at the 10 yard line. Jamal Charles. Brent, you talked to John Childs, who runs a 4 3. They inserted a quarterback, and anytime number seven and burnt orange comes in, it's the zone read. He's reading Vasquez on the backside. Nice job of accelerating. And Jamal Charles, I'm telling you right now, is as fast as any tailback you will see in the country. And the acceleration after that initial read is what makes him so special. 48 more yards for Charles. Childs keeps it himself. Touchdown. The Longhorns came to play. From Dallas, John Childs, 6'2", 205, takes two plays after the turnover to march the Horns into the end zone. 
Jim Dozier. Early morning workouts uh, paid off, huh? I, I think I think I think the Longhorns came to play tonight. They are fired up on both sides of the ball, executing flawlessly on offense, and a nice job there by Mac Brown and Greg Davis inserting John Childs with his own read. The first one, he hands it to the talented tailback, Jamal Charles, and the second one, nice read by Childs, and he's got the speed to get into the end zone. Ryan Bailey tacks on the extra point. Texas takes a two-touchdown lead. State will have to loosen it up now by Holiday Bowl. And the cycle of life continues as the, the sun sets here in Southern California. About 3.35 in the afternoon, Hawaii. Their fans, of course, can't wait for the Sugar Bowl and that game against Georgia. And here, the freshman, so excited about his two-play touchdown drive, John Childs. And the horns so far are hooking. Haven't seen a quarterback burst out of the backfield like that since old number 10 used to be back there a few years back. Burgess and McGahey are back deep. Lawrence to kick it off. Burgess to the 30. And he is out of bounds at the 34. Well, it's about 35 at 30 as we check in with our friend Reese Davis. Reese, Reese, thank you. We'll hear from you at halftime with the game. Rudy Carpenter completes it out of bounds, and let's check in down below with Lisa. Well, Brent, as you know, Rudy Carpenter, a really emotional guy, and I was talking to his center, Mike Pollock, and he said, I'm the one on the team that tries to keep Rudy calm. Sometimes he gets a little bit out of composure, and he's not afraid to wear his heart out on his sleeves, but sometimes he gets a little bit close to the edge, and I'm the one who's there just to rein him back in. About the whole Sam Keller controversy, he said it was tough for him to take over what some people thought was a divided team, but I told him, look, anybody who gives you any problems on this team or anywhere else, you point them my way, and I'll take care of it. And so far, Rudy says he hasn't had any problems. Indeed, as Nance is short of the first down, Marakpo bringing you down there. It's interesting that with bowl preparation, once you get to the site, the two teams will often get together in various events. It's be, it will be going on throughout the whole bowl season. Some teams are very professional and very guarded with how their emotions are around the other team, and other teams are not. And this week, I guess, with Rudy Carpenter, He's let the Longhorns know at every event how he feels about them, kind of taunting the Longhorns leading up to this game. First down. Nance picks it up, and uh, let's take a look at Carpenter's stats here. Well, he is such a consistent performer, and I think last year, because of what happened with the whole Sam Keller situation, he almost tried to justify him being inserted as the starter over Sam Keller, and I think he pressed. I think this year with a new coach, new situation, nobody behind him, he was able to settle in and be their leader and their guy. And checking into the backfield, Keegan Herring for the first time, slowed by an ankle injury, and the horns ready. So far, what we have seen from Arizona State, Kirk, has been a very conservative attack play. Well, their offense, as much as Dennis Erickson has a reputation for slinging it, and all the great teams that he's had throughout his career, going back to Miami and even at Oregon State with the offense that he had there, it's really about establishing the run. And for an offense this year that's allowed 51 sacks, if they can't run the football and they strictly drop back the throw, Texas will be after him every time he throws the football. Carpenter wings this one down the field of Burgess. And pulled in on the deflection. Another turnover for Arizona State. Marcus Griffin. They go with the play action, Brett. They actually had Eric Jackson, the safety, out of position. The ball is thrown late and high. It gives Jackson enough time to get up and deflect the ball right into the hands of Marcus Griffin. My question to you was an interference before the deflection. Take another look at it. It looked, it looked like his hand got up and touched the football before he, in fact, physically made contact with the receiver. But we'll go back and take another look at it.
So two turnovers, McCoy and the Horns back to work. Here's Charles, he's already rushed for 68, spins away, but still gonna take a loss on this one. Let's go back one more time and see if, Jack yeah. what do you make well, of Well, Jackson's in hurry up mode just to be able to get there. Ball is underthrown, and it looks like I think the receiver Burgess comes back, and I think, yeah, I think, I think Eric Jackson trying to desperately catch up to Burgess ran into him. Bang, bang play. Tough one sometimes for the officials down the field to make. Yeah, a lot of times interference is incurred when it's underthrown. Absolutely. Especially when you have your back turned from the quarterback. Usually you'll get called for that most often. Second and 13, McCoy rolls off the fake. Fires beautifully for a first down. Nate Jones. Well, Texas is in sync right now with Colt McCoy. You can just see the look in his eye, how much confidence that he has. And because they're able to run the football, they're able to go back. And what a nice job there of Jones getting his foot down. Look at the cushion. Look how much room he has to work against the true freshman, Omar Bolden. And the ball is thrown right to the outside. Perfect throw by Colt McCoy. We've got a penalty flag thrown here by the linesman. Sideline warning on Texas. Their first warning of the game. Remember early in the game when Mac was yelling at an official? Yeah. That's who he was yelling at. He's, he's going to give him one more, more, a little <laughs> bit more encouragement. Now, I'm yep. telling you. <laughs> he's got a pat on the back. Now. The pat on the back. <laughs> You're doing a heck of a job tonight. <laughs> it proves okay, man. Yep. <laughs> Ever tell you what a big fan I am with the SEC? <laughs> you boys keep doing your job. <laughs> McGee, the running back. McCoy going incomplete. He's trying to strike deep to Jordan Shipper. He's <laughs> <laughs> getting Childs back down in a position where maybe they go back to him. It worked pretty well that last time he was out there, two plays and into the end zone. Arizona State just has to keep their composure. They've been in this position most of the year where they get down early and have shown a lot of resiliency in their ability to get the ball back and get back and win football games. Second down and 10. He picks his way, and this will be third and long, and leading that aggressive charge is Travis Gotham. As much as they enjoyed a lot of success this year, for whatever reason, look, look at this number. I mean, it gives you an idea that I, I don't know if Dennis Erickson, this is a comfortable position to be in, but this has been a trend that they've had to fight through, and they've been very proud of the fact that Dennis Erickson has brought in a swagger and a belief that guys, he'll get in the locker room and say, we're okay. We're going to make plays, and we're going to come back and win this game. And with the success they had early, the players started to believe it. McCoy looking to set a screen on that backside. And he's out to the 29-yard line. Mark Hort. Davis. Big Davis, number 58. Dexter Davis. Dexter Davis is undersized. Come from the, he'll come from the top of your screen. Undersized, but makes up for it with tremendous quickness. We knew Arizona State would apply a lot of pressure tonight on Colton Coy from the outside because of Vasquez on one side and Davis on the other. It's going to be very important for the defensive tackles not to allow Colt McCoy to just step up in the pocket. Moore with Williams. Fair catch. Signal for it, the 24-yard line. Some barking going on. Well, aerial coverage brought to you by Goodyear. Get there on Triple Thread Technology. And we thank Captain Matthew St. John for these splendid pictures here on a beautiful evening in San Diego for a football game. Of course, this community fired up about the way the Chargers are coming down the stretch. Well, they I warned them, though, that they might have to go to New England, but they weren't listening. Oh. <laughs> oh. Congratulations. <laughs> New England is not what you want to hear. First down and 10. Play fake. 
Carpenter rolls away. First down as he puts it in the hands of Michael Jones. Yeah, everything worked off of play action by Rudy Carpenter, and that's why it's so important to get something from the Arizona State running game tonight so far in this first quarter. Only six yards rushing, and it's because Texas has, has everybody up close to the line of scrimmage. At some point, you're going to have to throw. Remember, Texas is secondary in their last four games. Struggled mightily. And uh, you know that Rudy Carpenter is eventually looking forward to trying to attack them downfield. Keeping it on the ground. Get up, get up, get up. So far in this game, the Texas Longhorns have certainly dominated. They have forced a couple of turnovers, ripping the ball away on one. Charles has rushed for 60-some yards. And the freshman Childs has danced in. And there the deflection on the pick. Right place, right time on that one. And a bit of a controversy, but uh, Arizona State didn't squawk too loudly about the fact that interference was not called on that. So play on. Right now, second down and 10. The short drop, Carpenter fires and incomplete. Michael Jones was the intended target. Brandon Foster giving up about seven inches. Undersized corner. Willing to take chances and willing to take some risks. And this time, jumped a quick slant. And was able to get in there and get in the way of Michael Jones. There's no question. Coach Aquina's players have a different attitude here tonight. Remember, they wound up 109th in the country in yielding pass yards. The last four games, they were torched. And they are playing with attitude here tonight. Incomplete and out of bounds. And those last four games, Brent, and they played good offenses. They allowed an average of 393 yards a game through the air with 13 touchdown passes. But they are, you're right, there's a different energy about Texas' defense right now. There is Coach Aquino calling defensive signals for the first time in his career. A man from Hawaii actually coached against Arizona State. And he was on Coach Toomey's staff down in Tucson in Arizona before moving over to the Horns. Thomas Weber, running for the second time, fair catch at the 29-yard line. Well, folks, help decide the Pontiac game-changing performance. How can you pick out one play? <laughs> Which one would you vote for, Lad? Well, I... Man, that, that's a that's a tough call. The Appalachian State blocked. That's a good one. Field goal. That's a great that start of the year. Yeah, that started the, kind of the uh, the theme that we had throughout 07. Georgia's touchdown with the celebration. The end zone's also one of the finalists. That plays up there. Play fake again by McCoy. Looking downfield. Got it. To the 15-yard line, Cosby. Brent, I, I said at the beginning of this game that Colt McCoy's feet would be a big asset tonight, not just scrambling, but to buy time to find receivers downfield. This is exactly what he's able to do here. Run away from the defensive tackle this time. English, get to the outside. And this is what you love to see from a receiver is not give up on the play. Cosby continues to work on the backside all the way over to the side where his quarterback is. Nice job of Colt buying time and a perfect throw. 55-yard gain, and here comes Charles on the next play. Breaking tackles, end zone, touchdown. Playing with attitude. After losing to their arch rival, the Texas A&M Aggies, the Horns strap it on and start working out at 6 o'clock in the morning. They were determined, determined not to show up flat in San Diego, and they suddenly have a three-touchdown lead on Arizona State. And for all the people that wondered how disappointed would Texas be on losing to A&M, not getting into the BCS, being discouraged, are they going to show up with any attitude? They've answered the bell here in the first quarter with 21 points. Ryan Bailey, and what we'd suggest for Dennis Erickson is call Central Michigan. 
get some comeback plays. <laughs> they're going to need something. I mean, what a great run this was by Charles. Charles has speed, Brent, but he also has a lot more power than most people would think. He has the ability to run through arm tackles, and if this game starts to get a little bit out of control in favor of Texas, you wonder how the will of Arizona State's defense is. Again, this has been a trademark of Arizona State. I understand that, but I don't know how many teams they have faced that have had this kind of athletic ability outside of USC. USC, but... Maybe and Oregon. And maybe, against them. maybe Oregon when you look top to bottom. This is a very talented Texas team. Let's go down below to Lisa. Lisa? J Jamal Charles finished the season strong, but as you know, he struggled early on. And part of the reason is because he missed running backs coach Ken Rucker. Rucker announced to the team on the first day of camp that he had prostate camp cancer and needed to be away from the team for a while to have surgery. He missed several games. And in his absence, Jamal Charles really struggled in one stretch. He had a fumble in four consecutive games and was even benched because of those turnovers. Then one Thursday night mid-season during a film session, the players looked up and who walked in? Ken Rucker. And feeling good and cancer-free and Mac Brown told me, he said everyone got up and gave Rucker a standing ovation. I looked over to Jamal and he had tears streaming down his face and, and Mac said that was when I realized how much Jamal Charles how much Ken Rucker rather means to Jamal Charles. He was really afraid that he was going to lose him. And you can just see the two on the sideline during one game Nebraska Jamal Charles rushed for 216 yards and the two embraced on the sidelines were crying Rucker said I was just so happy for the kid I know he is struggling and I wanted him to know how proud of him I am now it's Burgess for the five three bird orange jerseys it has been like that all night. Jamal Charles has already rushed for 80 yards here in the first half, in the first quarter. We've still got 122 remaining here. Great stuff from Lisa there, talking about the relationship with Jamal Charles and his coach. Sometimes something that gets overlooked in college football with all the attention on head coaches and the demands and the salaries that they, uh, that they now have is the relationships that position coaches have with their players and the impact that they can have. Clearly, that is there between those two. Now it's Carpenter's turn. Just beating the rush man and hitting Jones. Michael Jones picking up about seven yards on the play. Kellerbrew now on the field as one of the linebackers for the Horns. For Arizona State, I, I want to reiterate, their, their strength is running the football to take the pressure off of their pass protection of the offensive line to try to slow down a defense like Texas. Now that you're down by 21, I wonder, do they just simply say, hey, they know we're going to throw and we're going to throw and hope that this offensive line that's allowed at 51 sacks can hold up or do they stick with their game plan? That's good. Here comes Nance. First down for the Sun Devils. Now the Arizona State is searching for one of these game-changing performances. There's what Kirk talked about. Appalachian State, that blocked field goal against Michigan. Auburn beating Florida. Alabama TV in closing seconds against Arkansas. The Trinity, multiple laterals, multiple. I counted 15 on the game-winning TD versus Millsaps on that list. That would have to be my choice. That would be your choice. <laughs> However, that I am surprised. I am surprised that the fourth down Stanford pass right. against USC is not on that list. Well, that's a good one for you. Mine, one that I would add, would be the last play by Les Miles and the LSU Tigers against Auburn. I think we were in out. Champaign, Illinois that night watching that game. Time's running out. Throw to the end zone instead of electing to kick the field goal, and it worked out perfectly. Kept their hopes alive for an SEC title and eventually a national championship opportunity. Uh, what a year in college football. Huh? You can make an argument for so many great moments. Norton dropped off now. And here's Nance from Carpenter. Out of bounds. But he picked up a first down. Moving the chains, and this is a drive that Arizona State needs to finish in the end zone. Give themselves a lift. Well, they need to get their confidence going. As I said, they have been in this position 
not this bad against this good a team, but they have been in this position. Early in the year, they were down to Colorado, came back. Early in the year, on the road against Oregon State, down by 19, came back to win this game. I'm sure that's what the coaches for Arizona State are talking about on their sideline. Here comes the blitz. Carpenter complete for about nine yards. McGay Hay. And you can see Carpenter is a tough on break. And he is limping back toward the sideline, trying to get back to the huddle now as the quarter comes to an end. Dennis Erickson studying his play sheet. Carpenter shaken up. We've come to the end of the first quarter. And folks, it was dominated by Burnt Orange. They lead it by three touchdowns. Hey, Bo, we'll start the second quarter with Texas leading Arizona State 21 to nothing. And Arizona State quarterback Rudy Carpenter shaken up at the end of the first quarter. Seems to be fine now. He was not happy with the way he was taken down by the defensive tackle. Sideline high and incomplete. Kirk let us go back and show the fans what we picked up on his replay. Uh, Roy Miller gets pressure on him, and he's, he's been under a lot of pressure tonight. And when Miller gets in there, he gives him a little, little bit of a message. And, of course, the fiery leader that Carpenter is, he's not just going to take that. He's got a few words for him, but he did come up noticeably limping back to the sideline. And his emotion, it's almost like the coaches just wait till he cools down, and then they'll go and talk to him. But he the first down here, Kirk. Third down yeah. and three. A little confusion for Texas. They're going to have to call a timeout from the bench. Curtis Brown ran onto the field. He didn't like the way you lined up there. I don't know what that's and, all about. And Mac Brown decided that he's got to get a timeout before there's too many men on the field. Well, let us bring in a colleague Bob Davey who is down. Well, there's no question that the Longhorns are the faster football team in this game. Now that time the speed got him. A pass interference call against Ryan Palmer Kirk and that'll give him a first down. Ryan Palmer giving up again size to Michael Jones actually uses Jones's shoulder to use him as leverage to get up high enough to try to knock the ball away. This will be a first down That's for Arizona State. Number 13 on the defense. Penalty will be at the spot of the foul. Automatic. First down. He's about 5'10", and Jones is about 6'4", so he's got a huge advantage with the size. And his left hand he uses to help elevate to try to get up to knock the ball away. Clearly interference on Texas. So Rudy Carpenter brings the Sun Devils up there at the Longhorns 41-yard line. Straight back. Goes deep. McGahey intended target out of bounds. Bob, tell me, uh, some, there's another penalty flag down as the quarterback. Let me get this uh, personal foul. Another mistake another by first Texas. Down. Another mistake by Texas helping here. Bob, what about Rudy Carpenter? What are his strengths uh, as a quarterback? Brad, number one, he is a feisty, competitive guy. I mean, you see him right there take that late hit, hit penalty. It's been that way all season long. As you guys as well documented, I mean, they're last in the country as far as giving up sacks. That's a problem right now because it looks to me Arizona State really can't run the ball, plus they're down 21 nothing. But the number one attribute Rudy Carpenter has, he is a leader. You know, kind of a gym rat kind of a guy. There's a lot of, be play, a lot of plays to be made out there in the, in the passing game if they can protect for him. That penalty was against Frank Oakham, and he's one of the better defensive linemen. They're trying to get that running game going. Nance with a bit of a burst this time, Kirk. And I think it's important because of this, the way they struggle protecting against anybody in the Pac-10, let alone this Texas team that's fired up tonight. They've got to be able to keep the running game in and sprinkle it in enough. It's early enough in this game to be able to slow down that pass rush from Texas because... When you give up 51 sacks in one year, that's obviously not a strength. So running the football has helped them slow down that pressure against teams that they have faced this year. That's why if they have banned it completely, even though they're down 21, that could be a problem. Second down and four. They'll try to run the toss play here. Nance picks his way. 
barges for a first down. And uh, Bob, as you know, there have been injuries with this running game for Arizona State. Keegan Herring is nicked up here tonight. So uh, the burden is on Dimitri Nance to pick it up, isn't it? And Brent, also their best running back, Ryan Terrain, a young guy that I think has a tremendous NFL future, was hurt early in the year. But you asked me something else that jumped out, jumped out at me down on the field. Sometimes it's an advantage to lose your last game of the year like Texas did because you can tell they have had great preparation. I mean, they have come out focused for this football game. Boy, does Mike Stoops like hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> His man stopped at the 15, Kirk. <laughs> Texas that time blowing up and making a play, but Arizona State, we, we talked about at the beginning of this drive how important it is for them to stop the bleeding down 21. They did a pretty nice job here. Nine plays, 65 yards, pretty balanced too. Running and throwing, but mainly running the football. We mentioned Herring, he has checked in for this play on second down. And Brent, keep in mind, Arizona State led the nation in time of possession offensively. That's why they played improved defense. So like Kirk said, this is a key drive right here. Incomplete. Well, they've had a number of comebacks, which Kirk has referred to throughout this game, Bob, and uh, they certainly, uh, Kirk, have been the comeback kids. Yeah, well, you get down by 14 to Colorado against Oregon State. How? You know what that does is it creates a belief and a confidence that next time you're put in that situation, you're going to come up with the answer. But at one point, you have to go out and execute. At some point in the game, talk is cheap on the sideline. They've got to go out and execute, and that's what they're hoping to do here on this drive. Burgess slotted at the left. Michael Jones further outside. He threw it away. That's a lateral. That ball was thrown behind him on a lateral. The horns have picked it up. There's a penalty flag back on the 29-yard line. As he was going down, he threw a lateral. He was trying to hit Bob Davey, I think. <laughs> you know, it's crazy, coaches. It's a lateral, but as the ball bounced to the Texas sidelines, one of their ball boys or GA or one of the coaches started to pick the ball <laughs> up while it was still out live. Kirk, I'll tell you what, what's crazy is he got hit right in the back of the head. I mean, the Sun Devils just turning a guy loose right there on pass protection. I mean, they're going to get Rudy Carpenter killed. <laughs> As we said, that has been a, a problem for them all year. You know, Kirk, you talk about the comebacks. I think a big part of it, just the confidence these players have in Dennis Erickson. The ball, the was backward. Therefore, there is no intentional grounding. The result of the play, touchdown, Texas. Absolutely. But, but I want to see Kirk's ball boy. Yeah, you you, you got to see this. No question that was a lateral. You could see that right well, away. The pressure. Watch here. Herring on your left. Keegan Herring completely whipped on McElroy, the, set, the linebacker who blitzed. Look at the ball. There's, oh, the, there's, there's the ball no by Mac Brown. Oh. Somebody no pushing question. him out of the way. Oh, where is instant replay? <laughs> hey, the guy upstairs, can he call down on that? Did he touch the ball? Well, I don't know if he touched the ball look. or not. I didn't think there was any. Let's, let's see if he actually, actually from here. McElroy got the pressure. I, I just don't know if he there, actually. The, the referee has been brought over to the uh, to the headset. We need to go back and see that one angle again. With that, we've got to bring the person in the sideline back into the picture. You thought I was now, kidding you about a ball no, I knew you look weren't. At, look at this guy. And he touched it, but it, we get there a little bit late. <laughs> Does it the ball? Wow. <laughs> he took a forearm shimmy after he touched it, too. Oh, here's the angle. Oh, you know what? Now, I don't know. I think the ball bounced away from him. I don't know if he touched the ball or not. I'm not so sure now. Huh? I think the ball just took a bounce <laughs> away from it. I wish you like to be the instant oh, replay no. guy. So this one, huh? Brent, whoever that was, tried to be anonymous as fast as they could. <laughs> they turned and headed for the back of the bench right there. Whoever that there was, he was and By the way, his cell phone right now is getting yeah. a lot of. Yeah. <laughs> they're even pointing up to. The, they're in the stadium. They're pointing up to. Oh, here's Here we are. Here we are. All right, did that left hand get the field? Oh, reach down. Oh. Oh, 
No, he got the left hand back. <laughs> what about the thumb? What about the thumb? You think it touched the thumb? Where's the thumb? No, I don't I think so. You I want me to get tell. that football and see if there's a thumb yeah. going on? Yeah, there go down here and check it out. <laughs> I'm going to have to get part of Lisa Salter's paycheck. Uh, I can't keep working me this hard down here. That's, uh, Bob, that's in keeping with the spirit of this season in college football. Brent, you are right. <laughs> here, we here we go, go now. <laughs> Did it spin? <laughs> Look at Cleve Bryant in the background. You know what? It is not indisputable video evidence. Do we have a reverse angle on his left thumb? Well, by the way, what's, what's the call if he did something? Well, at some point, there has to be a legal participation, yeah. right? I don't think you can have coaches out on that field. No, or ball boys. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of ways to get FaceTime on ESPN. Uh, what was, Bobby, what was the name of that great? Was he from Lice, Dickie Magel, and the Cotton Bowl was going to score? Exactly. And somebody came off the bench for Alabama down there. Do I remember something like exactly, that? Exactly, Brent. I think you're exactly <laughs> right. But that was an amazing play. Keep in mind, it starts with the pass protection woes again of Arizona State. It starts with Keegan Herring completely <laughs> whiffing on it. McElroy on the I, blitz. No, it's just one of the funniest things I've seen. Ball boy goes down. Good technique. <laughs> going down to make the play. I can't believe you saw it live. I, 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 was saw good. It. I was like, what is he doing out here? I saw the lateral right away as soon as he yeah. stood behind him. Hey, yeah. Brent, but I can I get back to my point? Because I know you thought I was crazy when I said sometimes it's an advantage to lose your last game. Yeah, I did think you were crazy. I, know, <laughs> I knew I needed to come back and clean that up just for you. But, you know, going into a bowl game, I mean, so many times with 30 days of practice, you get a different football game in the bowl that you had the last game of the regular season. I'll tell you what, this is a motivated Texas football team. I mean, even the support staff coming the out call, on the Bobby. field. The ruling on the field has been reversed. While the ball was loose during a backward pass, a member of the coaching staff of Texas touched the ball. By rule, this is an unsportsmanlike act. Therefore, since the ball was loose on a backward pass, we're going to go to the previous spot, which was the 14-yard line. It'll be half the distance to the goal. Wow. <laughs> Let's see if he's still wow. smiling on that sidelines. No. I don't think he has a burnt orange jacket anymore. I think he already <laughs> lost it. He's headed. Now he's hiding. He's headed for the bus. Lisa, you've got to get over there and ask the young man if he touched the ball. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is unbelievable. By the way, guys, that saves the game for Arizona State. At least it gives him an opportunity because right now they're maybe looking at 28 to nothing. But now they get another shot. Can you imagine if this game changes momentum right now and the Sun Devils come back and win in a passionate football state like Texas, that guy will be famous what's the for guy, the wrong what's the, reason. What's the guy the Chicago Cubs? <laughs> the guy down the left field line? Bartman. Steve Bartman. <laughs> we got a new Steve Bartman in the state of Texas. <laughs> oh, my man. Oh, look at him saying, oh, please, horns. Hang on, baby. Hang on. Oh, mercy. Just when you think you've seen it all, folks. So it's a first and goal coming up. Matt can't believe it. The young man is not sure what to think right now. Oh, that, everybody's looking at him like, dude, oh, no. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, here but, we go. But Bob Davey makes a great point about team, not, not just the teams that lose, but the teams that can find a reason to get motivated and upset in their preparation to get to a bowl game. And we talked about it a lot this first half. The energy from the sideline, the energy on the field, Texas and their 6 a.m. workouts, opening up the positions, clearly got the attention of this football team. <laughs> Meanwhile, Arizona State, they're allotted 15 practices. They took 10 just to try to heal their bodies and try to recover from such a grind of a season. Now, now what, what is, if I, if I was a dentist, I'd just say hallelujah. Now, what's going to happen here? The spot? I think that might be what, uh, what they're talking about. He said half the distance, right? And the ball at the, was the ball at the 14? 15. It was a third and 11 at the 15th, right? at the 15 yard line. Right? Oh boy. So what our grandma is saying, I can't believe what you just did. <laughs> get a little bit of everything during Capital One Bowl Week. You sure do, I'll tell you. 
what a season this has been. Just, it began. The ball will be placed at the seven yard line, which is half the distance from the previous spot. It will be first down, Arizona State. All right, Sun Devils, let's see what they're going to do with this opportunity. So, him wagers. That's right, that's his name, the referee. What a night he has had. Brown is livid tonight. He is fired up. And his team leads it by 21. And the Sun Devils with a chance to get on the board here. 1240 still to go in the first half. I can't wait to see where listen to whether Jesse Palmer, Mark May ever had anything like that happen in one of their many football games. Have you ever seen anything like that? Only past outside holiday that, bowls. Outside that, <laughs> that Bears game you covered back, oh, back yeah. in the day. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, this is amazing, isn't it? And they caused the ball to become dead. That is an unsportsmanlike act. The play will be going back, and it'll be fourth down after the penalty is fourth down. Well, they, you know what's no. going on? The boys upstairs got the book out, and they're kind of they're kind of working fourth their down. way through the the rule book as we go here. I don't think they've ever encountered anything like this. It was a third and eleven at the fifteen. Statsman George Hill has told us. The ball has been moved to the seven, folks. The first down markers on the other side of the five. It's at the three yard line. So it would be a fourth and three as I look across at the marker. So it'll be fourth and three. You see the yellow line there? That's where they're going to have to go on this play. So the kid might catch a break here if yeah. they stop him here. On the oh, yeah. <laughs> Keep the camera on this a kid, Rick. Big break. Let's see what Arizona State elects to do with it. They're going to throw for it. Drop it off. Touchdown. McGarry's first touchdown of the season. How about that? How about the throw by Rudy Carpenter? The only place it could be to give McGahey a chance to make the catch. And McGahey, who's been his go-to man all year, gets his first touchdown of the year. This kid is Mr. Clutch. That gives Arizona State life. Look at the emotions. It's almost like it's the first time we've seen any life from Arizona State in this football game. Extra point is tacked on by Thomas Weber, the Lou Groza winner, bringing fire to that far sideline, taking advantage of a huge break. Very easily could have been if he doesn't touch the ball, 28 nothing Arizona or Texas over Arizona State, they get second life. Let's check in quickly with Lisa. Well, Brent, I'm being told that his name is Chris. I'm still trying to figure out what exactly his position is with the team, but you can see on the sideline folks going up to him and giving him a pat on the back. None of the players really wanted to ID him by last name, and uh, when I asked uh, one of the sports information folks, they said, we're not telling you anything. We don't want to embarrass him. <laughs> I think that's been taken care of. Fielded at the five by Cosby. Cosby looking, there's a penalty flag. There is a penalty flag. As he crosses midfield. <laughs> the field judge like pushing with the referee and the Usually that's an illegal Fort, block. Fort, Fort, thrown yeah. at the 29-yard line. I can't get over poor Chris down there. <laughs> I mean, we're making light of it, but totally inadvertent, just instinctively reached down there to touch it. But he's Steve Bartman in Texas. Right? Illegal block in the back. During the return on number two of the return team, penalty 10 yards, first down. Well, so let's the see what happens. This is a big, big series Back here. against them to the 19-yard line. And uh, now McCoy and the offense will see if they can uh, quiet this Sun Devil rally here by responding. Remember, it's been a very balanced attack tonight from Colt McCoy. Variety of formations, a lot of window dressing to confuse Arizona State, and a lot of success. 
Oh, McCoy and Charles fumbled. McCoy trying to pick it up. Finally dives on the ball. They ran into each other. A botched play. Well, clearly miscommunication between Colt McCoy, who takes off to his right, and Jamal Charles is going to take the handoff in front of him, and they just run into each other. McCoy, very, very fortunate that the ball bounced back up to him, and he was able to recover. It's an amazing in college football. A game is going one way. It's being dominated, and one event potentially can turn the momentum of a football game. This is a huge series for both these teams. Charles defended down at the 10-yard line. The Pacific Life game summary, and uh, folks, up until a few minutes ago, it was dominated by Texas. 21 points, and then they gave up a touchdown. Look at the rush yardage here. Uh, Jamal Charles off to a fast start tonight. The other thing that doesn't show up there is the two turnovers by Arizona State in the first quarter that helped Texas build this lead up and all of a sudden they get second life they score on fourth down and three and now you have texas packed up deep third and long rudy carpenter's dying to get back out of the field third and 19 from his own end zone and lit up on the play read brilliantly that time by the defense you don't think emotions play a big part in college football? This Arizona State defense didn't have anything to do with what happened on the field when poor Chris touched that ball. But look at the speed and athletic ability all of a sudden of Arizona State. And there's the leader, Robert James, right where he needs to be to bring down Jamal Charles. So Robert James, the leading tackler, and they have forced the Horns to punt from their own end zone. Here is Moore. Williams waits for it. Going to wave it off. And they'll work with half a field. Kyle Williams. Pac-10 was being dominated by the Big 12. Until that sideline situation. And now we'll see what Rudy Carpenter and the Sun Devils offense can do. Puff fake. Complete for five yards to McGahey again, and he catches everything thrown in his direction. It is hard to believe that McGahey has caught 55 passes and only one touchdown catch, which we just saw. And of the 55 catches, 42 have been for first downs. Oh, 42 amazing. of his 55 catches are first downs. And remember, that's the go-to man. On Christmas Day, his girlfriend, Aubrey McClue, said, yes, indeed, I will marry you. So what a week the day is having. That was Michael Jones, out of bounds. This will be very short. There's so much time left in this football game. I still think you're going to see Arizona State continue to attack through the air, but I think they have to continue to sprinkle in just enough runs to slow down Texas's pass rush because their big plays will come through the air against this Texas secondary eventually. Obviously, they whistled that play dead before it went out of bounds. You can see the clock continuing to tick. Third down now. Third down. Nance won't get it this time. Reached for it, and he's going to come up short. Nice job of Loki that time getting penetration, fighting his way through there. Loki scored the game's first touchdown on a pass play, if you weren't with us. He is the blocker in the elephant backfield. And they get down inside that 10-yard line, and he scored his first touchdown on a pass from Colt McCoy. So fourth down and one. And timeout called by the Sun Devils. That's their first used timeout. Let us go back. To an unbelievable Mac Brown's stepson, we are told. Chris Jesse, and now here comes your fourth down. Play fake and a throw for it. Oh, a little bit too high. The tight end, Brent Miller, could not bring it down, and the ball goes over. They had him wide open, folks.
the exact matchup that Arizona State wanted because on fourth and short, Texas brings everybody in to stop Nance. Right there, everybody's up, big window right behind the linebackers. And that time, when you see a quarterback have an open receiver like that, he just kind of pushed the ball like he aimed it almost a shot put and the ball sailed on him, made it for a tough catch, a catchable ball, but a tough catch for Miller. John Childs is back on the field. The freshman quarterback like for Mac Brown, he had a two-play touchdown drive when he was in there. Remember, he quickly ran the read option, and Kirk, you alertly said that that's exactly what they would go to with number seven on the field, and he is out there again. Kind of Mac Brown's way of retaliating with the emotions of the game swinging back in favor of Arizona State. Maybe he feels that he can regain the advantage. Maybe Childs can provide that spark with his zone read. Look, remember, he has thrown the football. He's one of nine this year throwing the ball. So more often than not, when he's back there, it's the old Vince Young offense. And there is the read. And he picks up about three yards on the play. Gerald Munns is the defensive linebacker who made the stop. As I said, I, I like the call here by Greg Davis. We'll see if it ends up backfiring with a turnover or if it ends up eventually leading to maybe a decent drive for Texas. But I just like the way the flow of this game has gone, how it quickly turned in favor of Arizona State. I like this change up here to get Childs back on the field. Here's Charles, and this time he is ripped down, and it will be third down. Luis Vasquez making the stop for the Devils. Let's see, third down and three. Really a long three, really almost a four. Do they dare throw it with Childs, who's one of nine on the year? Or they keep just saying, well, let's run the football. Devils are thinking run. They've got it. Childs won't get the first down. Horns are forced to punt. James making another stop for the Devils. Craig Bray doing a good job with the scouting report. When seven goes into the game, you load up the line of scrimmage and force him to throw the football to have any chance of executing three straight runs and another three and out for Texas. Moore trots back out. Williams is back deep. That return man, his daddy, the general manager of the Chicago White Sox, is a fake. They fake the punt and pick up the first down. Bobino, the middle linebacker. So Mac Brown gambles big time on that play. You know, people who get, who sometimes are critical about Mac Brown, it sometimes has a reputation of being ultimately conservative without Vince Young. Take that <laughs> deep in his own territory, fourth down. If Arizona State stops him, you can only imagine what the sideline on the other side does for the Sun Devils, but they pick up a first down, and Colt McCoy is back out on the field. They spread the field, go five wide, complete to the 41-yard line, Jordan Shipley. And there's a penalty flag, you can see. Came in late, maybe an inadvertent face mask, or no, maybe, maybe a personal foul. Definitely going to be a face mask on the back end of this on Arizona State. Personal foul, grasping the face mask on the defense. The player making the tackle grabbed the face mask, 15 yards, result of the play, first down. The junior, Jeremy Payton, the safety comes across right here on Shipley and he makes the hit his left hand gets caught on the face mask but he pulls and anytime you pull on that face mask it's going to be in the 15 yard variety just like that Texas is deep in the Arizona State Territory they're on the Devils 27 McCoy hands off and Charles 
is eaten up. 30-30, and here's Reese Davis again. Reese, second down for Texas, leading 21-7. And again, they spread the field. Five wide across. And McCoy throws it away. It'll be third down. The reason, the reason, Brent, you're seeing Texas go to this empty set with five wide receivers out is they want to try to get Arizona State secondary and linebackers in space. I think they feel they have an advantage with especially the tight end, Jermichael Finley, and the talented receivers that they have. They feel that if they can get them one-on-one, -on -one, that they can make enough plays, you slip one tackle, and you walk into the end zone. Charles is one of the five split out on this third down. Under enormous pressure, breaks away on the move. Short of the first down. It was interesting to watch McCoy. And there's another penalty flag down at the 20-yard line. To watch McCoy, he thought about throwing it running to his left and remember there were several interceptions thrown when he was on the move this year and he put it away but there is a penalty flag here and that is a first down wow half of the play is over personal foul the four on the defense when you have to distance to the goal automatic first down a big turnaround when Erickson and the Sun Devils missed on their fourth down opportunity. And now the Horns have marched right back down the field. Fake punt. Tryon incurs the penalty. And Tryon, a senior, so the state put Texas in the fourth down. It's exactly what they needed to do to force Mac Brown to make another tough decision on what to do, but they, they get the first down off the penalty. Charles alongside McCoy gets the fake. McCoy's going to run for it. Touchdown, Texas. And you've got to go back to Mac Brown on fourth down in his own territory, electing to go with the fake. Picks up the first down. Next play, Colt McCoy makes a great throw. Picks up 15 more yards on a personal foul face mask. And then the big penalty there by Tryon. A lot of things happen there. And all of a sudden, the game switches again back in favor of the Longhorns. Back out by three touchdowns. 443, though. Time here if Arizona State can put together a drive. Bailey tacks on his fourth extra point of the night. It's wild in San Diego. Why not? It's the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl. We've come to expect it, haven't we? So Lawrence has the ball on the tee at the 30-yard line, and let's see if these Devils can jump back again. They needed a lot of help from the Texas sideline to get their to get their only touchdown in this game. <laughs> Burgess will field this one at about the 15. And out of bounds, far side. That last drive. Well, that last drive was huge, and it started with the fourth down and short. Fake field goal deep inside their own territory. Works out for Mac Brown. Leads to a couple big pass plays, a couple personal fouls on Arizona State. Colt McCoy goes into the end zone, and after, again, the way this game... Turned. That was a big answer there by Texas. McGay, Hay, Burgess, Jones, the three wide receivers for Rudy Carpenter. Ooh. Let the air show begin. McGay, Hay, who scored their touchdown, far side, number 13. Rudy Carpenter, again, he has been in this position before for Arizona State. Be very important with about four and a half minutes to go here before halftime to try to come up with some points to try to cut into this Texas lead. Comes back with Nance trying to get the first down and can't. Kellebrew makes a fine play. 
Killebrew makes a great play, but it's really the entire Texas defense, especially off the edge there. You couldn't see, but Arakpo, a defensive end, held the edge well, and it allowed Killebrew to come cleanly to be able to take Nance away. Third down and two. Defensive line gets down low key, almost jumped. That'll get reset. Killebrew on the left side. And forced the timeout. Third and two coming up. Arizona State uses its second timeout here in the first half. 28. Jim McMahon winning one. His coach Lavelle Edwards. He's here tonight with his wife. Of course, he participated in the opening coin toss, the longtime BYU great coach. He lost to Navy, Lavelle did with BYU, in the inaugural Pacific Life Holiday Bowl game. But uh, through the years, uh, this game, other than the Big Four, they certainly have produced some of the most memorable contests of all the Bulls right here in San Diego. Brent, a huge third down in Texas. McElroy does a good job of fighting his way through along with Lamar Houston. Big, big stop that time by Texas to force Arizona State and Rudy Carpenter to the sidelines. So, Cosby back deep, standing inside the horns, 20. There's a flag. And a busy crew here tonight. It was fourth and two. And a But the horns want him to punt it again. And why not? That ball is inside the 15 yard line. So you pick up another five yards, take another crack at it. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage on the kicking team. Penalty will be five yards from the previous spot. Down remain four. Coach Erickson not pleased with. Number of mistakes here in the first half. And Loki started it all off for the Horns here tonight with a touchdown catch. Rudy Carpenter has thrown a touchdown pass for the Sun Devils, but it is 28 7. Texas at the Big 12, leading Arizona State of the Pac 10. Fair catch at the 28 and a big advantage as we go <laughs> uh, yeah Kirk had the wheels didn't he when he was uh, with the Buckeyes I, oh. you know, I don't know why oh. everybody thinks that Ohio State doesn't have any speed oh, every time you look at the first right? round of the NFL draft guys <laughs> the NFL so thinks they're fast yeah. everybody else thinks yeah. they're slow and you know guess what guess what I recall that uh, on a kickoff that Florida thought that Ted Ginn Jr. was pretty fast. Well, so how do you get a reputation? You know what happened? For being slow. I mean, how does that happen? Last year in the game, of Ohio State played against Florida. Florida showed up the way Texas has shown up tonight. Absolutely. Incredibly motivated. And Ohio State was going through the motions, thinking they could win the game by showing up, and clearly that was not the case. Florida deserved to win it, and they did. But to have a label that you're a slow team because of that one performance, what about when they played Miami? What about when they played Texas twice? What about when they played anybody? Lack of speed has never been a concern for Ohio State. By the way, I think that that's caught the attention of the Ohio State players. A lot of, a lot of people wondering if they can run with LSU in the SEC. Well, they're, uh, the Tigers, of course, the only two-loss team ever in a national title game. And also, folks, remember... Whoever wins it, LSU or Ohio State, they will be the first two-time winner in BCS history. If you go back That's in right. time now, starting with Tennessee, no one, no team, not the Florida States, not anybody else, have won USC, two right. championships. Because they won the AP. USC yeah. won the AP, exactly. and then they won the BCS the exactly. next year. But that'll end this year. Right. One, of these, right. one of these two fine teams will come up with their second championship. All right, here we go. Third and 14, 217. I guess you won't just go to the lab. The lab game on the offense, 35 yards. Now remains third. 
And so it looks like RC comes up with a big play here. And uh, you wonder how daring Mac wants the offense to be here. Looks like Rudy Carpenter going to get one one more chance here. Yeah, first he, man. he will in two minutes to go with a timeout, enough time for him to work in college football. The thing I want to say, Brent, the thing that stood out to me so far in what we've seen in the first half is Colt McCoy, who's been much maligned with the turnovers coming right. into the game, 18 interceptions, has been pretty, been playing pretty well tonight, making good decisions, buying some time with his feet. But the thing that stole the show is Texas's defense. They were ridiculed their last four games. And tonight, the energy that they have played with and, and the tenacity that they've been able to play with, that to me has stood out along with our young man and the staff that uh, made the play. That had to be a highlight for everybody. <laughs> you know, Steve Bartman, I go back to you yeah. referring to him in Wrigley Field. Everything fell apart for the Cubs. Mark Pryor was the pitcher that night. And how ironic that Mark Pryor this week signed to play right here in San Diego. Third down now for Colt McCoy. Incomplete, and Arizona State will get the ball back. Not only that, it stops the clock. The incompletion stops the clock. So there'll be plenty of time here for Rudy Carpenter. Now they just have to go out and be able to be able to make some plays against this Texas secondary. This is Texas secondary that's, again, one of the worst this year, not only in the Big 12, but in college football. And they have stepped up tonight in pressuring Carpenter and holding up well in coverage. The offensive line of Arizona State. And that's the big question here. As we come toward the end of the first half, can they hold off the pressure? Justin's punt fielded at the drop by Williams, and he gets on it at the 38-yard line, and so 2:05 remaining in the first half. There. I keep referring to those last four games, and you're talking about teams like Nebraska and Oklahoma State and Texas A&M, and some offenses that can go out and, and execute and throw the football around. Well, they last three games they really went after Texas through the air mm -hmm. and put up some not only some yardage but a lot of points. And look at tonight. Look at the difference tonight after having the 34 days to get excited, to get ready, and get prepared. And this first half, they've stepped up. Let's see, as you said, what happens here on this last drive, potentially for Arizona State in the first half. Rush four. Give him time. Comes in underneath the Burgess, and Burgess fumbles the ball out of bounds. Pass was complete. It'll be marked out of bounds. First and ten for Arizona State. Well, they brought four, but the, the way they brought eventually a corner from the edge, I think, almost was able to put enough pressure on Carpenter, but give him credit for settling in and making the throw. And Kelson comes in, and as soon as he comes in, he makes a hit on Burgess and almost creates a turnover. Would have been Arizona State's third on the ninth. First down and 10 for Carpenter and the Devils. Completes it again for about seven yards on that play to McGahey. Boy, McGahey's got a set of the best hands that we have seen this year. Soft hands, and also I think times people look at him and think he doesn't have great speed, but he will surprise you with his quickness and ability to be able to find seams in defenses. Make it second down and four. And he's going to go down. Orakpo, Brian Orakpo. This is the problem that Rudy Carpenter has had this year, is holding on to the ball at times too long. It's a coverage sack. Arakpo from the top of the screen eventually gets in. But it, the thing that surprised me there, it was another example of the quarterback, Rudy Carpenter, having plenty of time to either hit a checkoff or just throw the football away and avoid the sack, especially with only one timeout left here before half. Yeah, that's an enormous number of sacks that have been allowed by Dennis Erickson's team. And... Uh, one of their weak spots this year, protecting Rudy Carpenter. Dwayne Aquina, the defensive coordinator from Texas, I love his energy and what he's trying to do taking over for Gene Chizik. He is, uh, has a reputation from his Desert Swarm days of really coming after offenses. And because of the youth in the secondary, they've had to learn through trial and error. And they've made some mistakes. But He's an aggressive coach, and tonight he has turned the heat up 
on Rudy Carpenter with a variety of blitz schemes of trying to confuse that offensive line of Arizona State. Third and eight from the gun. Sacked again from the 36-yard line. And that was Kelson. See, this is what happens to Arizona State when they get into obvious passing situations. They're not quick enough up front, and teams that go up against them realize that, and this is why they scheme. Dwayne Aquina told us this week, most important thing is to get them into obvious passing situations. If we can get Carpenter into second long and third and long, then we can get creative on how we're going to come after him, and we've seen that on display tonight a number of times. That's why it's so important to have a, some kind of a running game. Of course, in this situation, with time running down in the first half, they're just trying to climb back in this down by three touchdowns. So those were obvious yep. passing situations for Rudy and the, uh, and the Sun Devils. And you would think now that Mac Brown and the Texas staff would be very conservative here with 117 to go. They lead it 28 to 7. You know what they want to prevent is having a 28-10 or a 28-14 at the worst. Cosby is back deep. Weber, their great field goal specialist. Also their punter. Cosby on a run-up at the 24-yard line. He's a terrific return man trying to get the corner. And he is pushed out of bounds close to midfield. Columbus when the Buckeyes were number one if they had some of that magic remaining. Well, I guess I was wrong. Not sitting on it at all. <laughs> <laughs> Different mindset tonight from Matt Brown. I would say. <laughs> and now okay. second down at 10. And the Lakers looking over there and saying, what do you, what do you think, Greg? I, we, we were kind of kidding about how Texas and, and Mac Brown decided, you know what, you're going to lose the Texas a &M. We're going to go to the Holiday Bowl. We're going to take advantage of this time. We're going back to boot camp. Guys are getting up at 6 in the morning to do their workouts. And Mac said I had to get up at 6 in the morning, too. So he, sh he showed up uh, a little bit of a mean spirit. Fired up. Here's Colt. Yeah. And Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Picked up on the run to the 15, just inside of a minute. So my friend, there are times and there are times. Coach okay. Musburger, I was with you. I'm telling you. Just run the ball and I'm kill, the, you. kill the up clock, you're up by 21. And this is the last oh thing my. that he thought he might see right here, but Mike Nixon not only gets pressure and contains him and wraps him up, but he gets the ball out. And Texas fortunate that Davis didn't pick the ball up and run into the end zone. Vasquez eventually does. Or Marquardt, I'm sorry, Marquardt picks it up. So Nixon, former baseball player with the Los Angeles Dodgers organization, forces it. Marquette recovers. And can Rudy Carpenter make it pay off? End zone, out of the end zone. <laughs> Jones, the intended target. Pretty simple play here by Arizona State, going to their taller wide receiver against the undersized Texas defensive back. Remember, I, I just want to say it from up here, because what's, it's what Rich Olson is saying. We're out of timeouts. We're at 47 seconds. We cannot take a sack, throw the ball into the upper deck. Do not take a sack. Get rid of the football. Second down and ten. Ooh. In trouble. Tosses it away. and <laughs> get, and, and get rid of the football. By don't, Oakham. don't throw it to the Burn Orange jersey. <laughs> I, I like that he decided to get rid of it. But the blitz again is just too much for Arizona State to handle. Kendall from one side, Houston comes right into his face, Norton gets in, and Mac Brown thought he had the turnover that he wanted. Dennis Erickson will take one more crack with this. It is third down and ten. Either get a first down or a touchdown. If not, he'll turn it to Thomas Weber. I'm sure the Lou Groza winner. Carpenter! 
incomplete, and now it is fourth down. It is fourth down and 10 as Ryan Palmer, number 13, makes the play defensively. Here comes the Lou Groza winner, and why not? He's 22 of 23. He's a young man who originally went to Michigan State. He thought that he was automatically going to become their kicker. When he arrived in East Lansing, they had recruited two other kickers. He didn't mind the competition, but he thought he'd been misled, transferred out, sat out last year, and here is your Lou Groza winner, a 32-yard field goal. And he makes Texas pay for their gamble late in the first half. Remember that field goal sequence. 28-10, folks. It's hard to describe the heart of a city as diverse and creative as Austin. It's not hard, however, to show you its soul. What starts here changes the world. The 30th anniversary of the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl as we welcome you back to what has been a wild first half, 28-10. I guess we should have known, Kirk, that when a defensive tackle catches a pass for the game's first Set touchdown, we were in for something. Right? Yeah, we're we're going to be a share under four hours tonight, which four, is our, what we... Four when it goes to overtime, we'll go five. Four, four half, five hours. <laughs> it's what you expect, like you said at the break there, when any time the Holiday Bowl comes up. But it's going to be interesting. Arizona True. State, they get the field goal. All of a sudden, 28 to 10. Remember, they've been right. in this position quite often. Everybody's been mesmerized by how do you make the adjustments and do so well in the second half? We'll see if they have it in them one more time. On the ground. Picked up at the 17-yard line is Cosby. He fights his way to the 33, and now just 30 seconds remaining oh, here. In the, you think, you think now he's going to fire down? Yeah. <laughs> Well, you went over to the Texas coaching booth over there during the break and let them know, boys, take a knee. <laughs> I don't, I, you know, I don't mind you handing it off and, you know, running a regular sequence in there, but try not to give them an opportunity. How about Mark Hort, the defensive tackle? He, he could have had, had a touch. Very easily. Huh? He could have walked into the end zone. Texas defense actually stepped up there and forced the field goal. Well, Jamal Charles celebrating a birthday. And he'd like to celebrate it in style. Here he comes again. Picking up about six more yards. He's had uh, almost, well, about 86 yards, I think. Robert James making another stop. And that's exactly what he's sitting on. Averaging 9.6 yards a carry. He scored one of the four Texas touchdowns. And the horns will use their last time out here with 20 seconds. It's a pretty good ball game when you're averaging nine over nine yards of carry. You know, in his last four games, uh -huh. he averaged over eight yards of carry. And what happened to Texas this year is I think the youth up front of their offensive line, Agreed. the Lima Swede injury, I think, really affected who they were as an offense. And I think after Oklahoma, they just went back and said, we're going to run the football with Jamal Charles. They lost a lot of coaching experience on the mm -hmm. defensive side. Oh, yeah. Gene Chizik went to Iowa State. And they never quite got the secondary together. A couple of those fellows are playing Sunday football. They were drafted in the first round. Right. If you lose that kind of talent, it has an impact on oh, that yeah. secondary. They've lost 16 players in the last two years combined to the NFL. Second down now and four. And McCoy going to wing it. <laughs> He's caught. And let's see. It was juggled. He's going to give him the first down. And that was Chris. Obanaya who came out. Robert James been very active here in the first half. And of course he's Coach Erickson said he's had a fine year as his linebacker, but his best linebacker from beginning to end. Brown still still has him in the hurry up here. We're under five seconds. They're still <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna wing it. Now he's gonna fake and run for the first down. He invited that lick there late. That was kind of said, come on, Justin, see if you can hit me. So try and oblige, and that'll bring the first half to an end. And a half 
depth that featured a little bit of everything. And let's go down to Lisa with Mac Brown. Well, Mac, the Sun Devils only got three, but a lot of people thought you were going to run the clock out. What happened on that play when Colt pumped the ball? What were you guys trying to accomplish? Well, Lisa, everybody that knows anything about Arizona State knows they have come from behind every football game to win. Dennis Erickson's a great coach, and we're going to be aggressive throughout the game. We were right here. We shouldn't have fumbled the ball, but we're going to be aggressive starting with the second half. Now, the play of the half, what in the world happened on that illegal touching play? Well, I didn't think we touched it, but you know, I'm not the official. I was standing right there watching it. The ball nearly went out of bounds. One of our staff members nearly kept it from hitting him, so he started to touch it. The ball bounced back in. Derek Loki pitched it back out. I thought that was a pretty big penalty for us, but I'm glad uh, uh, defense came back and started playing well again. Our offense scored again. Now, rumor has it that it was your stepson who touched the ball. He looked like he was going to crawl under a rock when Arizona State <laughs> scored. What did you say to him? Well, I'm not sure who it was, but I don't think anybody touched the ball, so that's good. Okay, good. Thanks, Lisa. <laughs> Lisa, I'll tell you what Coach is going to say. Chris, I still love you, but don't you ever, ever do that <laughs> again. Let's send it to Bristol now. Reese Davis with a flow max to the Pacific.